Hi, Tim Seleski again. I write for Popular Woodworking and I have a blog called woodworking.digital. One of the biggest requests I get is are there any CNC's that would work for woodworkers that are smaller and a little less expensive. In that regard what I decided to do is to try one out. And what I have in this box that's about two foot by four foot or so by about a foot tall and weighs about a hundred pounds is a kit. A kit that you assemble and then when you're done you end up with a CNC. What, what's in here is the Shapey Oco XL from Carbide 3D. So today I'm going to assemble this. I'm not going to do a time lapse but I'll stop and comment and show you different steps along the way. They say it could be assembled in about two hours. Since there's only 50 parts that seems reasonable. Let's open it up and see what we have. So what's inside is a collection of boxes. And they're all laid out and packed really well. We've got this little thing here that holds everything in place. Inside are all these sub-assemblies. It looks pretty straightforward. I'm going to take everything out, lay it out on my table, and start to assemble. I've unboxed most of the parts. Everything here is the structural aspects, uh, the structural components, excuse me, of the uh, Shapey Oco uh, XL. Now what it mostly consists of is this extrusion, and this is a normal channel extrusion, except they've, they've done their own because it has V-Rail actually built in. Now what V-Rail is, is one of the methods for keeping a CNC on track. Uh, the rollers will come along here, and you want this to be very flat and very precisely ground or extruded in this case. So there's two short rails, one long rail, and then the steel components, which is the frame. So you have this uh, inner and outer frame, and then these structural components here that will help support the spoil board or the base. You can see that right here. The kit also comes with all the parts. I put them all in this little tray, right down to the tools, these different Allen wrenches. Got a little bit of wrench here to tighten things up feet to fit underneath the CNC, and even a, a, little, uh, a little container of, uh, of Loctite. Obviously you want to lock some of these bolts down, I suspect the ones on the frames. Now how I uh, find out what to do and how to proceed is, is all the assembly docks are on Carbide 3D's site. So I brought a laptop out here for me to go and, and work with. And um, there's a couple of other boxes here that I'll get to later. These are final assembly components for the uh, Shapey Oco XL. And this is the wiring harness, all pre-ready, all ready to go. You just plug things in. The Shapey Oco XL, XXL, which is the larger version, and then the Shapey Oco, which is the smaller version, all use trim routers. Specifically, they're designed to use the DeWalt compact trim router or the Makita trim router. And if you already have one, then obviously you're ahead, but they also will supply one for you. So, um, oh, one more thing that I brought out, just out of curiosity, as my first grade teacher used to say, this is not a race, but I'm kind of curious. The kit looks pretty simple and straightforward because of these sub-assemblies here, but I'm gonna, I actually brought a stopwatch out. Let's just see how long it takes to, to put the kit together. So let's get started. Okay, let's see where we're at. I'm about 12 minutes into this project. <clears throat> what I've done is assembled the base, which has these front and rear uh, steel uh, stiffeners. There's three supports underneath, and everything's been put together with Allen screws, and looks like I'm about 12, 13 minutes into it. Very straightforward. The most awkward part is the obvious one, is lining up that hole with, or lining up that screw with the hole uh, underneath, but once you get that, everything goes very quickly. The next step in the instructions was to assemble the sliding x-axis and z-axis component. So basically what I did is I put the back plate together with the front plate and then I put an idler screw on and then this tracking belt here. It all went pretty well but it did take a little bit of fiddling so I'm about um, 25 minutes or so into it. I also attached uh, the, uh, um, the block here that holds the trim router in here. And if you had a Makita, you'd also be installing a spacer in here because their, their diameter is slightly smaller. 
than the DeWalt. I tightened up these screws here to, to, for the gantry uh, beam here. I want to make a note, uh, you're tightening, tightening uh, steel screws into aluminum. It's pretty easy for people to assume that tighter is better, but just get it firm because you could easily strip out the screw threading and the aluminum. So get it nice and firm, but don't over tighten. Next, I put these side rails on here. Note that there's a difference between the left side and the right side. The left side has two screws here that will hold uh, the, um, the electronics of the machine. The other side does not. So I put these on. You can see that they're moving. I think the next step would logically be to mount everything on these supports here. Now I've mounted the left and the right side rails with the uh, B rails here. Everything's been on here, is on here, uh, four screws in each end, tighten them firmly. Again, don't over tighten. You could definitely strip aluminum threads. I actually suspect that as this thing is used and as it loosens up, that these will need to be tightened again. Could be a good use for thread locker. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, I am um, looks like 50 minutes into the build. It's going really well. I think this is all the uh, major mechanical components. Most everything from here on is probably going to be the electronics, hookups for the motors, uh, the CPU which mounts over here. There was one final mechanical step to do and that is to put the belt, the dry belts in place. They're made out of rubber and they've got uh, these grooves and tracks that run along in terms of these drive systems and pulleys here. Uh, there was no particular instructions about tensioning. I'm just going to make a guess for now. I have them a little bit firm. I suspect that's about right, but we'll find out a little bit later. Also, I didn't trim off any of the excess for now. Uh, again, I suspect there's some sort of alignment or tensioning process down the road. But anyway, mechanically everything is set up. You can see how it moves just fine. So the next step will be installing the wiring harness and electronics. I finished the mechanical installation of all the different parts in just under two hours. But I did take a little extra time. In fact, I took about an hour cleaning up the wiring harness, putting extra zip ties here and there. I only ran into a couple of problems, and they really had to do with instructions. Um, this end of the, of the cable track, uh, there was no obvious way to, to hold it down. But it turns out in the kit, there's a couple uh, little sticky pads that you put in this, in this position to hold these into place. And the same is true over here. Well, now that the build is done, I downloaded the uh, Carbide 3D software. It's called Carbide Motion. It runs on a PC or a Mac, which is unusual. You don't often see Macs that can control CNCs. Uh, very basic, very simple. It allows you to do things like jog and move things around. Here, I'll show you here a little bit. So in the Y direction and the X direction and then down on the Z. Everything worked great once I plugged everything in. So what to do from here? What I suggest that you do is consider calibrating and, and squaring up the machine. Now, um, Shape Oco and Carbide 3D don't have any particular instructions for that. Originally, I was going to probably do a video on that because um, I'm used to doing that on my other CNC's, but a gentleman by the name of Winston Moy on YouTube has done an excellent video on how to calibrate this machine. And uh, uh, essentially the process goes something like this. Uh, you would measure the diagonals across here and across both sides, just like a lot of woodworkers would do to square up something. Essentially use a strap or a clamp or something, get everything square, loosen up the nuts along here, and then tighten everything up once it's square. Then you want to make sure that the angles and tilts of these beams are correct. And to do that, uh, you'll need a dial gauge and a magnetic stand. This is something that every woodworker should have in the shop for various uses. You'd attach it to different points and move along each of these directions. And because the, so the holes are slightly oversized in, these, in the steel parts here, you're able to kind of move things up and down. Anyway, I'd really encourage you to do that. Though woodworking may not seem like it needs to be as precise as, say, cutting aluminum or metal, I really think it really has to be. The result is you end up with a lot better surfaces when you're cutting, particularly with 3D cutting. 
So for example, uh, on my other CNC, you know, this is an example of a long, sloping, smooth surface. Well, there's no sanding on here. And if you felt it, you could tell I'm probably already up to 100 grit just because of the fine tuning and the fine machining that happened on here. I'd like to be able to get similar results on the Shape Oco. So it's really worth the time. Again, Winston Moy on YouTube. And uh, from here, uh, that's sort of the introduction of the Shape Oco. What I'm going to do from here is I, I'm going to go ahead and tune the machine, run a bunch of tests, make sure it's cutting square, do all the calibration things that Carbide 3D is interested in, plus all the added things that uh, Winston Moy has done, because I'd like to have it set up pretty tight. After that, what I'll do is I'll try to do a full review of this. I could already see some ways to improve on this machine, basically modify some things to make it better suited for woodworking, particularly when it has to do with clamping and registration. The spindle actually goes over, over the edge of this, so it may be possible some vertical work can happen on the edge of this. I, anyway, I think there's a lot of ways to kind of take it and push it a little bit farther, a little bit, make it a little better suited for woodworkers. So, for today, uh, this is Tim Seleski again for Popular Woodworking and Woodworking.Digital. Have a great day.